All right, folks, so we've got one last video for 2019, and this one is a gift of sorts on multiple levels. Uh, I thought the last video that I put out was gonna be the last one of 2019, but I went out for one last day, and I'm glad that I did. Now, before we get started on this video, I always have a lot of interest in the bows that I shoot, and I don't think a lot of people that watch these videos realize that I make all my bows, and so I wanted to take just a minute or two to talk about the bow that I was using on this hunt. Now this is a little 62 inch Osage Orange recurve. And if you follow along with me on Instagram, you'll have seen pictures of this bow before. Uh, and then also I did a, a live video last year where I took uh, some uh, cotton mouth skins and backed this bow. So this bow it pulls uh, 59 pounds at 29 inches, which is my draw length and it's, uh, it's backed with sinew. And one cool thing about this one is the stave was harvested by a friend of mine in 1991. And this thing sat around in his barn for 20 years before I got my hands on it. And I just finished the bow last year. So this is the bow that I was hunting with, uh, both in this coming up video and the, uh, the last video that shows our annual late season whitetail trad camp. And that brings up a very good point because next year, 2020, I'm gonna be giving away a spot at our trad camp for some lucky person. So uh, I'm gonna announce details about this soon after the first of the year over on Instagram. So be sure to go over there, follow at Clay Hayes Hunter and uh, be able to get in on this great opportunity. So with that, oh, there's one other thing that I wanna mention. I just recently released a three disc DVD set that has right at four hours of very, very detailed and comprehensive instruction on building um, self bows. It doesn't cover sinew backing, but it is very detailed in how to make a self bow. It's very inexpensive. So go over to this website. I'll put a link uh, both in the video description. And I'll put a card up here, but uh, go over there and check that out. And with that, let's watch a hunting video. So today is the last day of the season. And uh, I wasn't gonna come back down here, but we got a little bit of snow and I was hoping that it pushed the deer down, but I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm not seeing any deer. Nothing for it. That's a big track. Um, looks like a lot of deer moved through, but nothing recent. I think what I'm gonna do is just uh, drop down here below the road, all the wind's still going down, and just still hunt uh, my way into the wind along this kind of contour down here below me and then maybe come back up here around one ish and then head back up this way and there's a trail up there that i'd like to sit um it's eight o'clock right now so it's gonna get dark by about four o'clock got eight hours to get it done
coming down there. One there, one there. They all kind of come together right here. But I don't see anywhere to sit where the wind would be good for here on the ground. If I had a stand, there's several good trees to sit in, but I don't have one. The wind's kind of coming down like this. Like, if, I cook, if I tucked in there, they're just going to smell me. Get my first snowshoe. It's just walking along looking for deer and I there's all this patchy snow. There's little white patches everywhere. I looked over, this damn snowshoe was ten feet from me. Alright, so I've made, I sat for an hour and a half, two hours or so, about midday. I haven't, I've, I've seen lots of deer. The deer are here, they're just, it's warm and they're hunkered down in the brush. Um, so it's, what time is it? One twenty right now. It's going to get dark about a little after 4. And so... I'll probably end up just leaving here, um, part probably, I don't know, two, three hundred yards from where I think I'll sit this afternoon. I was going to hit up, uh, sit up on the hill. I made a big loop, uh, and when I was coming back down, or uh, there's a there's a place up there that was really good last year. Lots of traffic, but there was no sign, no fresh sign this year. Actually, most of the fresh sign that I deer right there. Some bitch. All right, I'm going to finish my coffee and then I'm going to book it on out there and sit under a tree for a while.
This is Andy was sitting in the tree, probably 15 feet from me when he shot his buck two years ago. Um, got one road, or a real heavy trail coming down this ridge. Got an old skid road coming up here, one back here. And so this is a good intersection for a lot of deer activity. Got two hours left in the season, so I'm hoping. a small buck across the ridge up there, about a hundred yards. That's good, they're moving. <sighs> I'm gonna go up here where he crossed and a little bit higher and see if I can see over the other side of this thing. There's a bunch of rose bushes over there they like to feed on. Probably making a mistake, but I don't care. It's the last day, last few minutes, so I'm gonna push it.
good God. Talk about last minute. Oh man. I gotta find my arrow. Not the biggest deer on the mountain by far, but talk about, I mean, I got like 10 minutes left in the season. I'm not complaining. Heck yeah. We're gonna be headed down to Florida here real soon. And I've got some hog hunts lined up down there. I'm gonna be doing a lot of hog hunting uh, over the winter and early spring. So uh, the first series of videos we're gonna be doing is like hog hunting 101. And I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks along the way. So stay tuned. <sighs> Having this work out like this was absolutely amazing but this deer I'm very thankful to have this deer because I killed an elk this year but that's not enough with those boys that's not enough and uh, this is gonna be this is big for us <laughs> 